Hey smartphone fans, welcome back. Today we are looking at the incredibly useful hacks integration called Device Pulse. If you ever wondered when your devices went offline, how often they dropped, or whether they are secretly rebooting in the background, this integration is going to be your new best friend. And with the new timeline card and the table card, it becomes a full visual health dashboard for your Wi-Fi devices, ESP home nodes, Bluetooth proxies, and of course, if you have other smart home apps. So let's jump into what it does, how it can help you improve your smart home, and we will be starting in a couple of seconds. So what does Device Pulse track and why it is useful? Device Pulse monitors the availability of devices that live on your network and communicate using IP. This includes Wi-Fi devices, Ethernet devices and of course ESP home sensors, Bluetooth proxies and other smart home bridges like Hue, Akara, Metrohubs or something similar. If the device has an IP address or reports its online state through the integration, Device Pulse can track it. It doesn't track Zigbee and devices, Thread or Matter and devices or BLE devices directly, because those don't have IP addresses. It can show you the stability of ESP home Bluetooth proxies, which indirectly affects your BT home sensors or other BLE devices routed through those proxies. This makes device pools perfect for debugging flaky Wi-Fi cameras, tracking ESP home reboot issues, monitoring Bluetooth proxy reliability, identifying unstable smart home hubs and spotting network problems like access point dropouts or failing switches. Instead of guessing what went wrong, Device Pulse gives you the visual truth. Let's start by installing Device Pulse. This part is quick, simple and you only need to do it once. Go to your hacks and then go to the search tab, type in Pulse and we will be installing Device Pulse integration Click on download, download, and since this is integration, we will need to restart our home assistant. But while we are already here, let's go back and let's also install the device pools timeline card. This card is a front end component for this integration. So once again, click on download. The latest version is version 1.0.3. Download and press reload. But while we are already here, there is also a third component that is not part of the hex currently, but will hopefully be added in the future. And that is the second type of the card. So yes, this is something brand new. And this one is called Device Pools Table Card. Since it's not still in the hex, we need to copy the URL. And we also need to make sure that each of those repositories gets a star. Thank you for creating such an awesome integration. Main card and also the second cards. Then go back to Home Assistant, click on Hacks, three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL, select dashboard and click on add. We then also have device pool table card, click on it, click on download. The latest version is version 1.0.2, download and just press on reload. That's it. Now let me quickly restart my Home Assistant. After that, add integration through settings, integration, click on add integration, type pulse, for device pulse, and we need to go through the configuration wizard. Setup is simple, but it's not just one step. First, we need to select if you want to use existing integration or want to create a manual group. For the purpose of this video, I will not be creating manual group. We will be using existing integrations inside Home Assistant to pull device information, IP addresses, and then to use ping to monitor if those devices are online. If you want to do everything from scratch, you can start with the manual group. But as I said, I will use existing integration. Next, we have option to select integrations. Let's say, for example, I want to monitor the Shelly devices. I will select Shelly with eight devices, click on Next. We can then monitor all devices, we can exclude some devices or only select devices. Let's select for example this one and add all devices that we want to control. Click on next. Then you have to set up the ping parameters. For example, three failed pings mean the device is offline. If the device doesn't respond in three pings, we will consider that device offline. Then we also need to select the interval. 
Don't make it too fast. For example, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, 600 seconds would be okay. Let's leave this at 60 seconds or one minute. And you can then enable additional sensors. Summary sensors. This is a sensor that will tell you how many shell devices are badly monitored, how many of them are offline. Failed pin count sensor. Disconnected scenes time step sensor. This sensor will tell you from when this device is not connected or disconnected. And this is the last ping sensor or last ping response time sensor. When the device last time responded to the ping. I'll select all four of them for the Shelly and click on next. And here it is for the integration, five devices, charger, heater, fridge, electric heater and water pump. Ping settings are failed pings before offline three, interval 60 seconds. And we are creating group summary, failed pings, disconnected since last response time. And the offline detection timeout is about three minutes and zero seconds. Submit. We can then select in which area each of these devices is. Since it is picking the location of the device, we don't have to configure that. We just need to configure this one. I'll locate this one here and click on finish. Let me quickly also do a couple of other devices or other integrations. And finish. We now have a bunch of devices. Let's start with ESP Home. We have BT Proxy, Bluetooth Proxy. Then we have network summary for all devices, open ePaper link access point, shell devices, SLZB 6 p 7 that is used for the thread network, and unified devices, for example, switches, access points, etc. etc. And this is how you add integration to your home assistant and add devices. But now we will be looking at the UI. So what actually can we show in the front end? There are two cards and you love both of them. One is the timeline card showing the date and time of each device offline or online. And the other one is a table card. Depending on how many devices you track, timeline may be better for few devices and table may be better if you have more devices. So it's all up to you. But the question is out of all of those entities that we just created, what can you show on the timeline? So first let's dig into the devices. For example, BT proxy. For that one, we have following, failed pings, zero, last response time, 6.58 milliseconds, offline scenes, unknown because device wasn't offline, ping is connected. If we look at water pump, we can see that we have 17 failed pings, last response time is unknown, offline is 17 minutes, and ping is disconnected. So we have all the variations between the first one working great and the second one that is currently offline. Let's go to UI, overview, select wherever you want to add those cards, configuration for me. Let's click on add new section, plus sign, type pulse. And as I said, we will first go with the timeline. Network devices, events timeline, or you can change this to just, for example, timeline. How many hours back do you want to go? 24, let's say 96. Will it be horizontal or vertical? And then select responsive orientation and responsive breakpoint. Click on save. Then let's also add the other card. Click on plus sign, pulse for device pulse table. What status to show? All, only connected, only disconnected. host integration name, for example, also pings failed and click on save. And this is what we have. Remember this integration was installed just a couple of minutes ago, 15, 20 minutes ago. So the timeline is still not ready. The timeline is best viewed, for example, after 24 hours, 48 hours or something like that. So we will come back to that later on. But now let's check on the table. We have table of all of the devices that we are tracking. We have integration ESP Home, Shelly, Open ePaper Link, SMLZB, Unify Network. And we have most of the devices online, except this one, which is offline. We have information about pings failed. The only one device has 20 pings failed. The IP addresses of these devices, which actually is not correct since all of those devices do have their own IP address, but this one is the router or network controller. We can also hear select to see only connected or only disconnected devices. And we can also group them, for example, by integration. First, the device pool time card. 
This card displays each device as a timeline bar, showing online and offline gaps, patterns and trends. It's an excellent way to see behavior over hours, days or even weeks. But unfortunately not in my case, because it looks like my network is perfect and I had zero events in the last 24 hours. And this is how long I have been waiting on this system to have at least something, but unfortunately it looks like my network is perfect. Or something like that. But if we jump into the other instance, here I had better luck because my BT proxy, M5 stack, home assistant, voice have turned on and off or off and on. Also my Seed Studio turned on and off, which is okay because this device is going into the deep sleep. So this is how the network devices events timeline looks like. That means that if device drops offline every night at the same time, this card will reveal it instantly. Next is a device pulls table card, which I already talked about. This one is incredibly useful for overview dashboards. Timeline card and the table card give you both patterns and summaries. And honestly, they look fantastic on a dashboard, even when it's empty, because empty means everything is okay. Let's now go through a few practical examples, because device poles really shines in real world scenarios. If you have, for example, Wi Fi cameras, you can finally see exactly when they freeze or disconnect. For ESP home devices that reboot too often, device poles will show the pattern clearly. Such as, for example, in this case where I've seen that the BT proxy was offline, but I also see that other devices at the same time went offline. I know the reason, yes, my access point unfortunately died at that time. So it took me 6 hours and 10 minutes to figure it out or wake up and reboot my access point. Bluetooth proxies are also another great example. This one here. If one of your BT proxies is unstable, all of your BT home sensors will also appear unstable with it. And this card will highlight exactly which proxy is the culprit. Same goes for example for the smart home hubs, if you have them in your home, Hue, Akara, HomeKit, Metro Bridges, etc, etc. If they reboot or drop offline, you will see it immediately in this timeline card. And if a whole group of devices drops together, such as in this case here, that usually points to the Wi-Fi access point or a switch issue. Device pulse makes those patterns impossible to miss. I know that Home Assistant has integrations such as ping already inside, I did with a couple of those, but device pulse fills a major gap in Home Assistant. It finally gives you a reliable visual history of what went offline, when it happened and how often it repeats. It removes the guesswork from debugging your network devices. And when paired with the timeline card and the table card, it becomes one of the most powerful tools for diagnosing your smart home problems. Network problems. If you've ever asked why is this device doing this, device pulse is the answer. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button because it really means a lot to me. And while you're already there, check that you are subscribed. And also, huge thank you to all YouTube channel members for supporting the channel. You are fantastic. And to everyone watching, liking, commenting and sharing these videos, thank you also. If you'd like to support the channel even more, you can join for just 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Pick something from the merch store or send a super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.